well um yes. with the world super bikes taking place um for round was it five where is it hang on one sec no round it was uh... round what's gone never mind it was in france magni cause yes sorry yes. so no it's um no it's been really really good uh to watch it uh unfortunately uh top rack um had a crash during one of the practice sessions a quite a dangerous crash as well yeah it could have been really really bad i mean i'm glad you know, he hit his shoulder and collarbone, but if he hit his head mm-hmm. at that particular spot, it did not look safe at all. But that kind of has sparked a little bit of fire into this championship because Top Rack was so far away. You know, he was winning everything. And so, you know, it's closed up a little bit. You know, um, it was very, very interesting round. A lot of crashes, you know, like a race one, yep. um, Jonathan Rea crashed. Nicola Bulaga, Nicola Bulaga, what are you doing? We had so, we had such an opportunity to you know bring back the point system, you know, down you know from top rack, and this was his opportunity. What is what does he do in race one? He crashes. Nice. Why was it raining? No, it was raining. Oh, it was raining. It was yeah. it was difficult difficult conditions, but overall, World Superbikes this year has done really well. Um, I find it very very interesting where it's at at the moment with BMW. Um, and top rack, you know, being so competitive, the Ducati being competitive, Yamaha have really disappointed this year. Seems like not only just in one super point, no, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, I mean, HRC have really disappointed in world super bikes as well. Mm. Um, Kawasaki have been not too bad, but none like the glory days of Jonathan Rea winning everything, you know, yeah. like it's been a really long time. I don't know what is. I'm not sure what's happening with um Japanese manufacturers, you know, because you know, okay, in um MotoGP you can say oh Michelin and the tires and all blah, sure, blah, blah. But, sure. but what about Pirelli tires in superbikes? The European manufacturers have seemed to have just R and D more R and D, more money being spent on development. They're just walking all over the Japanese bikes, which is funny because the Japanese in MotoGP and World Superbikes were the dominant ones. Not long ago either. Not long. No, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what's happened. It's been, you know, like have they just a, hired the wrong people. There was like a huge drought. I mean, Ducati didn't win a race in um, no MotoGP, in MotoGP until 2016 with uh, um oh my god, what's his name? Um Anoni. Yeah. That was that uh, Austria. <laughs> and then uh, and then they went on a golden run with um David Giorso versus Marquez. Yeah, and all yeah that. that was cool. But what's what has happened to the Japanese uh, motorcycle world? Yeah, then, now that you mention it, it is just them. Like it's, it's just them that's speaking of down. though. Today we did find out the tragic news that Nor- Noriyuki Haga's son tragically passed away during a motorcycle race. So our condolences there. That was um very very hard. You know, Noriyuki Haga has been a huge factor in world superbikes and um tragic you know for a father to see oh absolutely yeah so um yeah to that whole family uh, our condolences but in terms of the racing for this particular round if we go to the results uh, of uh, of world superbikes um it was uh, very very interesting at the top of the standings uh <laughs> oh, there we go. The a bit weird. race one uh, michael vandermark for bmw if it wasn't top rack winning in a bmw it was someone else yep. which shows the development of their bike but you know vandermark bautista and petrucci uh ran it out of the top three in the sprint race uh, nicola bulaga came back for a win alex lowe's for kawasaki and daniel petrucci for ducati making it uh, ducati one three and a Kawasaki in second. And then in race two, a very, very good race, very entertaining. But Nicola Bulaga won again, Petrucci second, and Gerloff for BMW in third. So again, very, very interesting. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, I still think it's a top rack championship, but he can't afford too many more crashes. I mean, he is 50 uh, points in the lead, 50, but yep. they've got a lot of racing still left. Mm, that's very true. Um, um, 
So, yeah. Look at the look at the points. Honda's ninety three versus BMW and Ducati both in the four hundreds. Yeah, that's, last. That's very very not good. HRC. I mean, look, I'm going to put it to you. Could Honda pull out of motorcycle racing? Oh, jeez. It'd be sad. Very. Yeah. But if they're spending money for this, I don't know. Question is, are they spending enough money? Do you re- actually, can I ask a question? Do you reckon it? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of the times where their performance has gone downhill mm. badly. Was similar time to when Red Bull signed Honda for their engines? Is there any coincidence there? Money so wise? you think that Honda have spent more money into building a Formula One engine mm-hmm. and they've taken the money away from their motorcycle racing? Yes. Could be. Is that a conspiracy theory I just made up? I don't know. I could be. I think it was it, around the 2019 time. Yeah, my point. Maybe. Yeah. But anyway. what about Yamaha then? Yeah. What are they that. building? Pianos. <laughs> True, true. <laughs> Music equipment. True. Did you see half that me- of the studio? Did you see that meme where the guy goes, "I'm looking to buy a motorcycle, and I'm also looking to buy a piano." No. And the salesman goes, "I kid you not. I've got the right. I've got, the, <laughs> I right got, I got the product for I you. I got the product for you, and it's Yamaha. <laughs> Beautiful. No, oh, I think it's fascinating. Um, could be that would that would make sense for Honda. Not for it doesn't make sense for Yamaha. No. However, um, let's switch. Well, they're pretty successful in another category, though. Uh, the Aussie Superbikes. Uh, incredible. Incredible. So um, the Australian Superbikes round five was from Phillip Island. Again. And my, oh, my, did the South Australians make us dream. Arthur Sissis in race one, third, his first podium in Australian Superbikes, but in race two. In race yeah, two, Alex. Hectic. We were this close. Yep. Slipstream. Many people know about Slipstream. Was this close to an Australian Superbikes podium with our rider Tyra, Tyra Lynch, from 16th on the grid? Yeah, in the rain, went all the way to third, and he had pace quickly too. And he had pace to win. Yeah. However, as all complicated and difficult races in the rain, unfortunately, he came unstuck at Honda. Oh, wow. It was so amazing and so proud of him for pushing and so proud of him for giving it his absolute maximum. Did you see that bike and the movements that that bike was making? They were all doing it. No, but coming out of the last corner, the commitment that he had in the wet, with over 200 horsepower at your wrist. It kind of just made, I don't know why, but it it kind of looked like he was just on wet tires and no one else was. Like, I think he stormed through really quickly. Like yeah. you said, he started 16th. And it was third, what, lap? What lap was he third? Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Twice because he was fifth and then he got red flagged. Ah, uh, yes. And then and then he went back again to 16th. And then within two laps, went to all the way to third in the Shit. restart. So the restart made him revert to the old grid? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought he was going to start fifth, and I'm looking around. I'm like, where is he? And oh, God, he's back there again. But he got a rocket launch. <laughs> oh, it was so good. I mean, um, Josh Waters, phenomenal. You know, um, um, he's extended his championship lead in the Australian Superbikes. Um, the Ducati team are doing a spectacular job at the moment. You know, the Yamaha factory team as well. Um, again, Alpha Sis is in race one. Uh, you know, great, great ride. Rode really, really well, but in race two, he also, you know, came unstuck uh, uh, with the rain. Um, you know, made a made a mistake, and and you know, unfortunately, had a had a fall. But you know, I, I think it's uh, fascinating how the, the the riders that are willing to risk it all in the rain, how they come out, and you know, to see Tyra up there, you know, as a small privateer team. You know, putting all the budget together themselves, and you know, just doing such a, a remarkable job, and uh, you know, to see to see him so far up the grid in his first year in yeah, Australian Superbikes, cool. and and you know, what a place! You know, Phillip Island is just fast, fast. It's beautiful. It's cold. It, it was made for motorcycles, except for the weather part. Except for the weather, yeah. Except for on the tarmac, rain. it's made for it. Except for the rain and the wind. Yeah. Where's, know, the, where's the next round? You know. 
The next round, uh, I believe, uh, are they doing it at one raceway? Yes. Oh, yeah. So the website before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One raceway. And then the finale will be at Taylor Mend. Okay. So, oh, that's in November. Yeah. I saw the billboard the other day. That's in November. <laughs> yeah. Mark yeah, is yeah, working. Yeah. I saw the billboard. Yeah. But Sounds look, cool. overall, um, another brilliant round of uh, of Australian um, superbikes. So do you want to quickly, we'll quickly run through the, uh, the results? So in race number one, Harrison Boyd, sorry if I butchered your name, um, as a, you know, a one-time appearance with that team, you know, actually took the win, took it to Josh Waters, who came second, Arthur Sissis third, Crew Halliday and Glenn Allerton rounding out the top five uh, with Mike Jones in six. And when we go into race number two, Brock Pearson, um, again, another Ducati win, Josh Waters second, Anthony West, I mean, that's a name that is, you know, a legend of motorcycle racing um, in Australia. Uh, third, and he rode really, really well. Uh, Glenn Allerton, Cameron Dunker, great results in the rain. Um, and that rounded off the top five for that particular race. Uh, the factory Yamaha team, you know, didn't have the best round. So it'll be interesting to see how they come back. But Josh Waters, uh, a fantastic lead now in the championship and uh, one hand. Yes. Or the I was, I'm just looking at the gaps. The gaps were massive. Yeah, well that's the yeah. rain. The rain it was one point two for the leaders and then seventeen and forty three. Yeah, huge, huge, huge gaps. So the conditions were dreadful. Dreadful. Dreadful conditions. Yeah. But um another fantastic round of the Australian superbikes uh, and uh, we can't wait to, to follow uh Tyra's journey for as he rounds off and finishes his first year in uh, ASBK. And doing it at well, he's finishing at our home. At our home. I know. That's going to be cool. We'll have a lot of uh, content on now. Let's Talk Motorsport and Slipstream social medias. Well, speaking of which, that pretty much ends our... That's it. That ends, ends our show. Uh, daniel list, but ends our show tonight. <laughs> um, we look forward to having Daniel back yeah, we uh, next week. And uh, lots and lots to talk about with uh, Formula One back. Big weekend. Big weekend. Uh, will we see a brand new leader in the constructors i reckon so i think it's imminent yeah especially at, at, at baku i was gonna say uh, azerbaijan baku yeah that track's gonna be crazy we'll have um yeah a lot lots of content coming out we'll have our f1 uh review after that's done as well as you know our show next week um yeah not i'm not sure what else is on next week but um yeah f one's gonna be the major yeah the major event and all eyes will be yeah on that constructors championship as you said there's only I think four points off memory um, between and, McLaren and Red Bull and Ferrari, a seven, not very far back. And uh, yeah, the championship between Lando and Verstappen is getting smaller and smaller too. So. And Oscar Piastri, uh, will he play <laughs> team? Or will he, uh, who knows, but super it's, exciting. McLaren's uh, just got to get the strategy right first. <laughs> yeah. Formula <laughs> one in the 2024 is spectacular. We can't wait. To, and um Alex, thanks for tonight. No, thank you. And as always, uh, thank you to our listeners. Obviously, we can uh, you you, know, you, can, you can watch this episode back on our social medias, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Spotify. Spotify, TikTok. Uh, look for the yellow icon, as Daniel calls it. Um, and also, yeah, our website, ltmotorsport.com for all news. Everything we say is on there. So go have a read and um yeah thanks everyone for another great episode we'll have hope daniel back next week but um yeah thanks for listening and uh yeah we'll see you guys all next week bye